welcome everyone to today's appraisal buzzcast thank you so much for joining us we've been getting a lot of great feedback on the new format so i want to introduce hal humphreys of appraisery learning your host for today hal thank you so much for joining me happy to be here jim um loving doing this podcast this is fantastic fun yeah we've been g getting great feedback so we appreciate all the support and the people continuing to comment and like so we've got a great episode today. We've got Mark Palem, the VP and Deputy Chief Economist from Fannie Mae, and we'll be discussing home price forecasts and market conditions. Welcome, Ma Mark. Mark, Hi. thanks for being here, Mark. Thanks for including me, I really appreciate it. Well, um, do me a favor. This is your first time on the show. Um, I was in the room at the CRN when you spoke uh, last year and really enjoyed your presentation. Um, Tell our listeners kind of who you are and a little bit of background. How did you end up here? Sure. Um, so I'm glad you enjoyed the presentation, and, and uh, it's always great to be at the CRN uh, among such a great group. So um, how did I end up here? Like a lot of careers, you sort of wander around, but my career started out in fixed income money management, and then I went to graduate school and got a PhD in economics, um, and I went in sure i was going to do something relate to macro but i got quite interested in antitrust policy and micro so i i uh, after grad school went off and did litigation consulting worked in antitrust trade cases patent cases and then i came back to finance um after 2009 came to fannie mae um you know they had thinned out thinking they would from whatever they were thinking and then realized we were probably going to be around for a little while, so they needed to start hiring again. So, uh, and came back to macro, which is where I started my career. So that's that's a long story. <laughs> I love it. And uh, 2009 must have been a very interesting time to get back into the business. It was. I mean, I, I was very fortunate. Um, my my boss this day, Doug Duncan, had just a little before uh, come over from the NBA and was rebuilding his team. Um, so I got to be the eighth person on that team. And I think I'm, I'm only one of two people left and we've grown it by doing a lot of interesting work across the housing sector, uh, including work related to appraisal and appraisal standards and things like that. Um, so now our team, we have 38 people on the team. So oh my gosh. Been... That's, that's fantastic. Well, hey, let's take a quick break and hear from one of our sponsors and um, when we come back, Mark and I will dive into our conversation um, about 2023 and the market and real estate appraisers and what the impacts may or may not be. Considering the sizable economic impact of the golf industry in the U.S., understanding the economics of golf courses and clubs makes good sense. Golf Property Analysis and Valuation, second edition, will help appraisers and others understand and properly analyze these unique properties. Check out the newest book from Appraisal Institute today. Welcome back, everyone. Mark Palem here from uh, Fannie Mae. He's an economist. Mark, we're here today to talk about uh, the market in general in 2023. Tell me a little bit about the market so far this year and kind of what we've learned. Sure. So, um, as I'm sure everyone can appreciate, the key driver of, of the real estate market for the moment is the change in monetary policy that we've seen going on uh, starting in the beginning of 2022, where the Federal Reserve shifted from uh, an easy monetary policy as it had responded to the pandemic and provided a lot of liquidity to the mortgage market, to the rest of the economy, to uh, tightening and raising the federal funds rate uh, in order to address inflation that, that, that had gotten well ahead of the 2% target. So that's been the key driver, is that shift from easy money to tight money. We saw in 2022 mortgage rates go from, uh, at the end of 2021, they were 3%. By the end of 2022, they had gotten to over 6 and they had touched 7% in October. Um, so naturally, that had a significant impact on sales, and by the fourth quarter, was also having an impact on home prices. A real speed change of a year. Yeah, it's, um, it, it, it was interesting to watch 2022 unfold um, and, and, and see how the market was reacting to the change in the interest rate. Um, and, you know, from a consumer's perspective, you know, if you can get money at, you know, 3% plus or minus, you can buy a lot more house than you can if you're dealing with 7%. 
exactly. And, and affordability, obviously, was the key factor that was hit. And we had um, two ingredients in that. It wasn't only that mortgage rates doubled, but it's also that during the pandemic period, if you go from uh, the end of 2019 all the way through June of last year, home prices nationally went up by 40%. So that was an extraordinarily large increase in home prices, partly due to, to low interest rates, partly due to the influx of money. And for those who didn't lose a job during the pandemic, they were in a stronger position to buy. So when you think of affordability, we measure that. There's a lot of different ways to measure it. The headline is that by the middle of last year, uh, what I'll call unaffordability was even higher than it was in 2005. So the market had really gotten unaffordable if you think of the first time home buyer or even the move up buyer. You know, interestingly, you know, my wife and I, during, during the pandemic, we had talked about, you know, well, we could, we could sell our house and we could realize a huge capital gains, but then where would we go? You still need to live somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, 2023 has has seen, by some measures, a pretty strong start. Um, what are your thoughts on on what would be the reason for the strong start to 2023? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, if you think about the interest rate sensitive components of the economy, those are typically housing, uh, business investment, and uh, car sales and other durables for consumers. Housing obviously last year was the one area that was clearly in recession, right? Uh, when you look at home construction, remodeling, all the different aspects of, of housing. Now the rest of the economy held up very well despite the increase in the Fed funds rate and the shift in monetary policy, the, the drop in the stock market and the implosion of crypto. I mean, there were a number of things that hit the economy. Yet the economy overall really held up well, and you've got unemployment at record low levels. So that has helped the, the uh, rental market and the housing market. Um, but you have seen even cracks in the rental market, where in the fourth quarter, uh, rents started to, to decline uh, for the first time in quite a while. Um, and you've also seen home price probably peaked in June and in and then now actually coming down in quite a few markets during the fourth quarter. So while unemployment remains low, that's great. The housing market is clearly in recession. Um, and, you know, there are some markets. I live in Nashville, Tennessee, and during the 2008 crisis, everybody's talking about the, the housing prices are going down. Everything's falling. The sky is falling. Um, Nashville did not see a huge dip in prices. Um, and we're not seeing it here. I think there's some markets around the country that are not seeing a significant decline in prices. Um, thoughts on why that happens? That's right. And that's really, it's important to, I'm so glad you bring that up because even though for the um, country as a whole for this year, we're forecasting a 4.3% decline in home prices, that means some markets are going to be down 10% and others are still going to be up, right? And so local, all housing is local. National factors do affect housing at the local level, such as interest rates, overall changes in the economy. But then it's really local factors. If you're in an area where your um, dominant industry is laying people off, for example, the tech sector in the Bay Area, it's not surprising that we see, you know, greater home price declines uh, in some of the, the tech suburbs in the Bay Area than we do in a lot of other parts of the country. Right. So you're really going to see that variation. Right. And there's there's an argument that, you know, I, I heard several appraisers over the past two years saying these prices don't make sense. There's an argument that there's some form of correction going on in the pricing model, too. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, uh, prices reflect demand and supply and, uh, you know, they set at the margin. So when when interest rates really dropped, people as you said in the introduction, could could afford to bid quite a bit more. And you saw the seven, eight people at the open house or the 30 people. You know, the market has shifted, right? Um, but as we've seen historically, and we've seen the same pattern this year, the first thing that happens is the rise in rates really hits buyers um, because they, they feel the repricing immediately. Sellers are a little reluctant to accept that their property may be worth a little less than they'd hoped. And so you tend to see the quantity of homes sold decline first when interest rates jump up. 
and then you see a price effect. And that's what we're going through right now. You right. saw a significant decline in home sales last year, and now you're starting to see the price effect. One of the things you talked about at the CRN meeting was housing inventory and, and how that's affecting uh, the, the um, residential market. What do you see going on there? It's a really interesting uh, factor going on. We, at the beginning of last year in January, in the existing home market, we had less than two months of inventory. Now, it used to be if you spoke to realtors, they'd say four to six months was a healthy balance. There was enough properties on the market that buyers could take their time, look at them diligently. It wasn't crazy bidding wars. Um, you know, maybe that number now is more like three to five because of technology. Uh, buyers can much more quickly see many more uh, properties than they used to be able to, et cetera, et cetera. But we were clearly in way too tight of a market. That's moved up a little bit on the existing home size. We're probably in the high threes now, so a lot healthier balance. Uh, on the new home si side, things really jumped up. So in the beginning, during the pandemic, new home builders had a hard time getting, just like the car builders, right, the car manufacturers, a hard time getting all the parts and they needed to build a home. Um, that has really eased now. And in fact, you're seeing uh, close to nine months of inventory and you're seeing pretty substantial discounting um, by builders in one way or the other, right? They've been helping out with, uh, on the financing side, um, they've been also, you know, trimming prices a little bit. So, so very much two different stories going on. In the existing market, if I could just add, the lock-in effect obviously is, is the key driver. And that's one of the reasons that home price forecast is, is not uh, substantially more negative than it is, because so many people refied into mortgages um, at 3%, at 4%, and they have an incentive not to, to, not to move and not to sell. Right. You know, the funny thing is, you know, when, when the pandemic hit and there were a lot of supply chain issues going on with um, construction materials, building materials for residential homes, um, <clears throat> I know I, we had looked at pricing um, a small building project, and, and when we finally decided to pull the trigger, the builder said, no, 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 the, the price of the lumber package alone has gone up 350%. It's incredible. I mean, the, even just the board feet lumber, if you follow the indices, it, it, it exactly that kind of number, you know, it tripled. Um, so there was some real issues, not just with, when you think about a house, it actually has a bunch of semiconductors in it, right? The washing machine, the microwave, the, the AC systems, and then, you, um, you know, all the materials, the, the solvents, the paints, all the other things. So. So it really is um, the supply chain issues um, and actually the storm also, the ice storm in, uh, in Texas last winter also really affected the, the petrochemical industry and that affects housing. So Sure. I saw a thing on Facebook um, during the pandemic when lumber prices were so high, they had um, somebody posted one of those funny memes that said um, this trucker was stopped coming in from Canada smuggling a load of lumber in um, a shipment of pot. Yeah. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I better say nothing. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Um, well, that's a good place to take a stop and, and hear from our next sponsor. And when we come back, we'll continue our chat about the market um, with Mark Palin. Since 1978, LIA Administrators and Insurance Services has been offering E&O insurance to valuation professionals. Welcome back, everybody. Mark Palin from Fannie Mae Economist. Thank you for being here today. Um, we're talking about the market we've kind of covered 2023 start we've discussed the issues from the pandemic and, and, and housing supply and those kind of things what do you expect in 2023 from the market yeah, so this is um we have a forecast we put out a monthly forecast so you know for your listeners if they want to check back on the website during the year um, make it broadly available to everybody in the industry um, since last April, we've had a mild recession in our forecast for this year. Um, in the first half of the year, given that, as you mentioned, a strong start to the year, that's, that's sort of getting pushed out into Q2. Um, it does, doesn't the forecast happen a little bit in Q1, but Q2. But as I mentioned, it's a mild recession. With that downturn, uh, obviously there's some impact on housing. And the reason we have that is that for the Federal Reserve to be able to rein in inflation, you really need, unfortunately, for unemployment to go up. 
Um, that's the traditional way that they, they bring down demand and bring inflation back under control. So in that kind of environment, it's not a great environment for housing. Um, so we have a continued uh, slippage in, in home sales, particularly in housing starts too. Uh, for this year, we've got, I'm just looking at the numbers in front of me, uh, total home sales for this year, we think will be down 17%. Um, and housing starts will, will have another tough year, year over year, they'll be down 24%. Um, now what that disguises a little bit, the year over year numbers is, is we think in, in the housing starts, things will, will bottom out in the third quarter. Um, and then you'll start to have a little bit of an improvement. Um, and also for home sales, we kind of see things bottoming out in the second or third quarter. So we think housing will actually, if the recession is mild, um, then we think housing will actually help pull the economy out of recession, particularly the single family side. Because typically what will happen is uh, once the Fed is done raising rates or the bond market perceives that they're done raising rates, then you get a rally in the long rates and mortgage rates start to come down a little bit. So that's part of what we think will help the single family market uh, do better at the end of the year. Okay. Um, that's one of the things about your presentation that I, that I really thought was interesting. You know, we're, we're looking at a recession and you're calling it a mild recession, um, but Fannie Mae is still projecting a recession of sorts, you know, going into the future, but there is hope um, towards the end of the year and going into the next year. That's right. That's right. And the reason I describe it as being mild, and of course it's, 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 it's never mild for households to get caught up in it. But uh, the reason I refer to it as that is we have an, an unemployment rate staying under 6% in our forecast, right? If you look back at prior recessions, you know, 10% is a more significant, more severe recession. Um, and, and so that's why I've described it as mild. Okay, interesting. Um, will it be a soft landing or a decrease in values? Um, you know, we have home prices dropping this year by 4.2% in our forecast. Obviously, that's the decimal places there as it needs to be. Um, and then we also have them continuing to decline next year but by 2.3%. So values do need to come down. There's, you know, we mentioned affordability early on. There's only three ways really to help improve affordability. One is income growth. The other one is interest rates coming down. And then the third one is home prices coming down. So. Our, our forecast uh, over the next two years kind of has a little bit of each, right? Um, and and that get you an improvement in affordability. Okay. Um, I was I was on Facebook this morning. Please don't pass judgment on me for that. Um, we have to do it for, for business purposes occasionally. Um, but there was an appraiser in Maine who said, we're going to run out of comps in a few months. Um, they're worried about not enough sales going on in certain markets. Um, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I can I can understand particularly uh, a market like I mean, depending what part of Maine there is, there's a seasonal element to that market too, a second home aspect. Um, in recessions, often second home sales do slow down significantly. Um, you know, you've had the stock market take a hit um, that that can affect second home purchases too. The other thing too is that if you look at our forecast overall, part of what we've seen during the pandemic is probably some sales that got pulled forward. So you had uh, first time home buyers among the, what I'll call the renters by choice, you know, people who were class A tenants um, who were like, okay, we're gonna move in a few years now with this pandemic, let's move now. And then the other group that uh, likely accelerated and you see it in the data on migration um, are people who are close to retirement, right? Mm -hmm. Who uh, were like, okay, I'm just gonna retire in a couple of years out of New Jersey and move to North Carolina. Why don't I do it now in 20, late 2021, 2022, and I'll work remotely. And if I really need to go to a few meetings, so be it. Um, and then there's also people who just retired early. So that may be affecting some of those sales volumes in some markets. Yeah, and I noticed in, in, in Tennessee and I think Texas also experienced some of this. I think possibly Florida, um, you know, the migration of people from California to Tennessee, there was a, a significant number of people from California coming to Tennessee and Texas. And there was there was a, a, a an example given about an apple in the supermarket in California is like $5. And in Nashville, it's 250. 
And they're like, yeah, but I've been paying $5. I'll pay you $4 for that Apple. Um, and I think there was some of that going on. For sure, for sure. And you saw it in data in terms of um, what had been tech overflow markets, uh, Austin, Boise, Salt Lake, parts of Colorado, you know, for the last five, six, seven years, companies were relocating there. Now the employees just moved, you know. Um, and uh, and so you also saw that in Florida for sure, and I'm sure in Nashville. And Nashville was one place that boomed during the pandemic, as I'm sure you know, because you're there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I think the inflow has slowed. People kind of are a little bit where they are, mm -hmm. and uh, people were waiting to see about the reopening of their offices and would they be made to go to work. Um, and frankly, we need to get through this tech downturn before we'll know for sure, right? Because it, uh, it may be that the bargaining power of employer versus employee shifts and some companies may demand more in office presence than they did previously. Right. Well, Mark, I cannot thank you enough for taking the time to be with us today. It's all, I find it always fascinating to talk to um, someone who understands economics at the level that you do. Um, it's, it's fun to have it explained in a way that normal people can understand it and you do a fantastic job of that i think that's one of the reasons uh, jim morrison reached out to you to be to join us on the show jim i'm gonna bring you back into the room here well thanks how before we go we have our anonymous appraiser question uh here we go it says love the podcast all volume has slowed to a trickle in my area but when we do homes get home sales they're surprisingly for increasing prices in my area I'm unsure whether to get to call this a stable or declining market. What are other factors should I consider to make this determination? That's going to go straight. That's going to go straight to Mark. That's out of my wheelhouse. <laughs> so I'm definitely not going to give people advice on how to with, what terminology to use in their appraisal, um, because I'm not like I'm not a licensed appraiser. Um, but all markets are local, so I'm, I'm really glad to get the question and that attention to what the local dynamics are in our market. Um, and at turning points, it's really hard. Um, and the appraiser has a really important role in terms of uh, helping people, keeping people out of trouble. So uh, take a look at the data and give us your best judgment. I think that's that that's absolutely the only answer to give to that question, because Fannie Mae is not in the place to tell appraisers what to say, what determinations to make. Um, at the end of the day, you've just got to analyze the market as an appraiser. That's what we do as appraisers. We're analysts at heart. Um, so take a look at the market, uh, analyze it, draw your conclusions, and then stand by it. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. That was such a great conversation, Mark. We really appreciate you joining us. Um, and we want to thank our listeners and sponsors for joining us and helping us put this on as well. Hal, I'll hand it over to you for the last words. Mark, thank you again for joining us. We appreciate your time. Thank you. And that is your appraisal buzzcast. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.